What if an asteroid, as massive as the one that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, struck in the same place today? Could mankind survive? In the Gulf of Mexico, over 500 miles south of Miami, an asteroid seven miles wide, the size of Mount Everest, has crashed into the water, kicking off a chain reaction of horrifying disasters across the planet. If an event the same as what killed the dinosaurs happened today, you're talking about the near complete destruction of anything and everything on the planet. In Los Angeles, a cloud of ash cloaks the city. Minutes later, a massive earthquake shakes Southern California to its core. At a magnitude of 10.8, it's the most powerful in recorded history. A shockwave radiates from the impact site in all directions. You're now going to have the blast wave, the shock wave, the compressed atmosphere that can't get out of the way fast enough from this hypervelocity impact. And that produces a effectively a very big bomb blast. The blast of air hits places like New Orleans and Mexico City at 875 miles per hour, almost three times the speed of the fastest tornado on record. For those caught in these fierce winds, there is nowhere to run or hide. It would be obviously the loudest sound you've ever heard. The concussion from an event like that is going to burst your lungs, rupture your internal organs. Um, you're going to die pretty much immediately from a blast like that. So you have rocks, fire, steam, pressure, sound, earthquakes, all at the same time. It's literally an apocalypse. And this is just the beginning. When the mountain-sized rock struck the earth in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, it created a ring of waves spreading in all directions, producing massive tsunamis. Waves hundreds of feet high surged toward the cities on the Gulf Coast of the United States sending people running for their lives. We're talking about massive waves, not one, but there's actually many waves separated by minutes that will impact the coast and engulf anything and everything in its way. Over 650 miles northeast of the impact, in Miami, Florida, where the asteroid was first seen blazing through the sky nine hours ago. A tsunami over 30 stories high now barrels toward the city. In the peninsula of Florida, your highest points are only, you know, maybe 100 feet above sea level. The tsunami of that magnitude is gonna be pretty devastating. A wall of water blasts through Miami like a wrecking ball. Florida will suffer greatly. It's exposed on every side, and it's a particularly shallow piece of land with nothing that can really stand in the way of the monster wave. Cities like Miami are going to be absolutely inundated. We know from the geologic evidence after the dinosaur killing impact, tsunamis raced inland deep enough to uproot forests and, and drag them back out into the Gulf. Even thousands of miles from the impact site, the populations of Beijing, Moscow, and Cairo 
are under fire from the heat and debris that continue to rain down. A quarter of the world's population is already dead. Can mankind hold out? Or is this the beginning of the end? This isn't just flash and it's done. The secondary effects could cause even longer lasting damage. If you survive the initial impact, you would be stepping out into a hellscape of absolute chaos. And unless you're prepared for it, you're going to die. When the asteroid slammed into the ocean floor, it ejected rock containing toxins that become potent as battery acid. Sulfur-containing compounds released to the atmosphere, combining with rainwater, are gonna make sulfuric acid rains. The acid rain would do a huge amount of damage to everything on the planet. Buildings would corrode. Plants would die. Rivers would be clouded full of material. Most reservoirs would be undrinkable. You would have to have some amazing water filtration systems to even begin to think about survival at this point. In Los Angeles, one week after the impact, survivors are still recovering from the massive earthquake that almost leveled the city. They now must battle toxic dust, aerosols, and acid rain. If you were to survive long enough and you were to come out of your shelter or anything like that, you'll have to have protective equipment. You'll have to have goggles from all the dust in the air. You'll have to have a filtration system, a respirator. The combined effects of dust, smoke, and acid rain do more than pollute the air and soil. They almost completely block out the sun's rays. Without sunlight, plant photosynthesis stops. Without crops, animals will die. And without plants and animals, people will perish. Effectively, the whole food chain is broken. We know that the extinction nearly 66 million years ago was a global event because beyond just the dinosaurs dying, we know that roughly two thirds of all species of life perished throughout the world. And so this impact had to have global consequences. Changing the atmospheric composition that's gonna severely affect agricultural plants. There's gonna be a lot of people out trying to scavenge food beyond their local supermarkets, that's for sure. You will do anything for your loved ones. That includes instituting survivalist tribal war to try and get someone else's resources. At that point, it's survive or die. The asteroid impact will decimate the human population as a whole. Sixty-six million years ago, when the first killer asteroid hit, most land creatures weighing over 30 pounds went extinct, which means the long-term outlook for humanity is grim. leaving the very existence of our species in doubt. I would guess something like 99% of the human population would die in such an event. Long term, say 10% of all of humanity lives. Then you have a genetic bottleneck that may not be a viable population. It gets to a point where all of a sudden, you're the last group of people on Earth. And if that happens, you may survive for a generation or two. Our intellect is our tool. That is our evolutionary edge. But we've lost the kind of 
necessary natural tools to use in a situation like this. The next great extinction likely will be us.